stupid reactions. Tune in for the It's so weird. Like, I, I feel I've lost track of time. It's so bizarre. I know. We've been living in the twilight zone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Were you, were, were you here for Sacred Games or Gully Boy? Or? Uh, no, no, I was... Uh, I, I was there for meeting. Gotcha. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, but then it was uh, at, at the back of Sacred Games, and it was nominated for the Emmys International. Yeah. So the, the the awards were going to happen in um, in in New York, and then I said, "Ah, oh, it's just a six-hour flight. Let's do it." <laughs> and then I came in and I did my meetings. Yep. It's always yeah. it's always meetings. As an agent, <laughs> <laughs> talk well, to was... people. <laughs> talk to people. Exactly. That's that's how yeah. it, that's how it works. And then, yeah, and then I chilled. <laughs> and well, then you had okay. your people call <laughs> their people. Yeah, man, it's it's so weird. No, but I have to tell you this really really bizarre story of being in LA. Um, it was. Quite a cultural shock for me. I mean, in the sense that I haven't been to LA in years. Uh, I can't remember the last time. I think I was there in like 2011 or something. And it's so bizarre because I feel it's just changed, or maybe I have changed, you know. Um, uh, and I was uh, uh, walking around looking for this place to eat, and and it's like it's even stupid of me to say that I was walking in LA because nobody walked in LA. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, right? I was walking in LA and and you know finally I just got tired of walking because there's really nothing to see just roads and gray buildings so I finally found the stupid square that had like decent amount of food to eat so I went and I got myself um, fries and a salad and that's a great combination as you may have already guessed uh, but then I, I just saw the, the preposterous size of this, this meal I couldn't finish the fries so I walked out with the fries and I thought I would give it to somebody who would be willing to take it off my hand. And there was this person who looked positively homeless. And I almost walked up, almost tapped his shoulder and said, do you want these fries? And this person looked at me and said, uh, no, he didn't even look at me. He just whipped out his phone and it was an iPhone. And I just... <laughs> Shocked for my life. I was like, <gasps> this guy would have like slammed those fries in my face. <laughs> I, I <was> <laughs> like, I'm leaving this country now if I could. I yeah. was just like, so I was, got in the taxi and I told the taxi driver to give it to somebody if he was kind enough to do that. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'll grab it off you. And then yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, different types of people here in Los Angeles and huge portions as America likes yeah, to like just Huge portions. Homeless. Like this person was homeless. He looked homeless, but he clearly had an iPhone. No, that's just the L.A. look. That's just how we look. That is absolutely the L.A. look. There was a guy, there's a friend of mine, his name is Pedro Ayostash. He's a really world-renowned woodwind player. And he was at, at this place uh, where we were doing this event. And I had someone say to me, uh, would you go help that homeless man out of the building? And I turned to them and said, that's, that's oh, pretty that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's bizarre. Well, it's a uh, pleasure to talk to you. Uh, we it's are... a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, we, uh, we obviously, uh, I think like a lot of people were first introduced to you in Sacred Games, even though we know you've been around longer than that. But we were immediately transfixed with you when you came on screen. Uh, like I don't, we actually did like episode by episode reactions to each episode. Uh, oh, wow. and, and we were, Wait, let me see if this light is better, I think that this bizarre <laughs> shadow on my face, hold on. Is this better? It looks, looks great. Yeah. Fine. Good. Yeah. You know, I have the actor syndrome. Just want to make sure. <laughs> understand. <laughs> yeah. Totally understand. Awesome. <laughs> Tell me. No, you're good. Yes. Yeah, no. We did so, an episode by episode reaction. Yeah, yeah, we did an episode by episode reaction, and we were f when you first came on screen, I think we were just raving about you. Uh, and then, spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen Sacred Games, we yeah. died. Uh, <laughs> we were extremely sad. If, if, you know what? If they have to Sacred Games after like one and a half years of its release, then I didn't die. They need to die. <laughs> exactly. Well, we were mad. 
we were angry when you're the, I remember our reaction when you died. We were angry that your character is gone because we so enjoyed your character on the show and enjoyed your work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you. Do you uh, want to see? I have a poster of Secret Games in my house. I yes, yes, course. yes. I can't see it. Yeah. I can't. Oh, there it yeah. is. I got it. Oh, it's just, it, yeah, that's great. I haven't seen the yeah. one with just you on it. That's awesome. Yeah, in case somebody comes to deliver food to my doorstep and they don't know who I am, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen, have you seen <laughs> Sacred Games? <laughs> what? I don't get food right. for free? <laughs> just like yeah. I apologize for my existence. Yeah, but we, uh, we were extremely uh, impressed that, um, because we consider we got to interview uh, Nawaz uh, yeah, for an God. interview, and he, he, we think he's one of the greatest actors we've ever seen. Uh, and the fact that you went in there and were able to hold your own and go toe to toe in your in your scenes with Nawaz was so so yes, impressive indeed. to us. And uh, so all the credit goes to you, and obviously Anurag and the writers, of course. But uh, you, you did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I honestly thought it was really easy to be with Nawaz because uh, he as a person is so quiet. <laughs> and I am like the chatty one. <laughs> so, you know, he's just like, he's, he's like the dormant cat. He's not going to fight back. He's just going to be like, yeah, fine. You know, he's like just that person. It's just come here, yeah, bite my ear, just leave. You know, just don't fuck me. You know, he's just that person. And, and he just allowed me to be the nutcase that I am just around him. Like I would just walk up to him, hug him, give him a kiss on his cheek. I'm like, come on, let's make love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, he. I okay, imagine. I don't know what, how to react. Come on, then. Like, uh, let's go make love. <laughs> I'd, I'd imagine he makes it very easy to work with in terms of oh, he's just so easy. Uh, you know, I mean, when you are remotely um, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, if if you are witness to to the star culture that we have in India, uh, then you'll know that every star comes with an entourage, you know. And, and I think now that I'm at the entry level celebrity stage of my life, you know, like now I know that I have like uh, my managers outside my vanity van and then I have, you know, somebody who's doing my hair and makeup and then I have somebody who's doing my costume and that's pretty limited. But I know people who have like, you know, their friends and family and entourage and, you know, somebody to just like carry a dumbbell, somebody to carry a bottle of water and whatnot. Right. And I would imagine Navaz having the kind of repertoire he has in terms of his work to be a person like that. And he's anything but that. Mm -hmm. he, he just blends into the corner that you put him in and he would just there and he would just melt, he would just become that place mm. and uh, because he was wearing a lot of those lungis you know the 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 wrap around skirt that you have mm -hmm. like like and he would like be sitting with his foot up you know rolling maybe a cigarette with his you know with his lungi in his mouth and you can't even notice the guy because everybody looks homeless on an anurag kashyap set <laughs> 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 <That's funny. Yeah. laughs> and then there'll be this one guy with like a walkie who'll just walk up to like one homeless guy on the set and be like it's your shot and that's when you realize it's you know Nawazuddin Siddiqui who's walking to set mm. zero frills zero fluff around the guy he's just so grounded so down to earth it was a pleasure to just Chill with him. You know, the one thing that he told me that I think is going to stay with me for the rest of my life is so there was this one day where, you know, the schedule was a little haphazard and we were waiting to like get on set and we were waiting for like about maybe two hours or three hours. And I can't sit in my vanity van. I've got ants in the pants. I have to step out and talk to somebody. Someone was making chai or somebody was doing something. I just can't sit. So I just knocked at his door and I said, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, Nothing, chilling. So I'm like, hey, I'll come chill with you. It's like, sure. <laughs> so I walked into his vanity van. I sat with him and I said, it was like, you know, more of one of those um, gossip magazine questions. So I was like, so, like, how do you deal with all the waiting? 
and he looks at me and he says uh, आप इसे इंतजार कहते हैं इसको आप वेट करना कहते हैं मैं तो पूरी जिंदगी वेट कर रहा था विच सिंपली मीन से यू कॉलिंग दिस वेटिंग लाइक वेटिंग फॉर टू आवर्स वेटिंग फॉर यू लाइफ डूट सो दिस इज लाइक इट एंड आई एम जस्ट लाइक ओके आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू चिल विथ यू एनी मोर आई एम लीव फॉर मी मैन आई एम लीव टू डीप टू डीप मैन फिल्म सेट्स आर ऑल अबाउट वेटिंग Yeah. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Well, I what um one of the things I wanted to know was when did you first want to be an actor? Uh was it since childhood? Was it later on when you started to do things on stage? Because uh, I know you started speaking first, did you not? Yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah. I reached that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean like, like you were MCing, you were MCing and hosting. I would be strange if I started acting. I mean, I, I think I was you acting up before I was before I learned how to speak. You started. <laughs> you started talking first, right? Like first. Yeah, that's awesome. Start... <laughs> I love that. That's great. No, I, 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 no, I, I love you, Ricky. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> um. No, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I think I I couldn't really tell the difference between uh antics and performance mm. you know like when you're up to your antics and you're like being this entertainer or if you're just keeping people smiling or whatever as a child you know you're you're given that leeway to do whatever you want just because someone else doesn't have to entertain you this child is self sufficient and he or she will entertain themselves Mm-hmm. Uh so it was somewhere there probably that one day I would do this uh but I don't think it was ever really the idea of doing it professionally I just didn't ever think of it professionally mm-hmm. uh I started hosting events um or speaking on stage like when I was maybe 16 years old and every time i would finish a show i would get a check or or get get receive an envelope which would be called pocket money mm-hmm. so my mom never allowed me to ever think that i was earning out of this bizarre activity of speaking on stage mm-hmm. uh, and then mm-hmm. you know she kind of pushed me in the direction of having a secure job like working where you know your neighbors and your friends and your family would be proud of you and that's exactly what i did because that's when i moved to dubai for the very first time it was the first flight i had ever taken in my life mm-hmm. and uh eventually after finding jobs after jobs i worked at microsoft 3 years oh i realized i hated it mm-hmm. and then i said i think i want to go back and do something on my own and that's brought that's what brought me to mumbai Now the weird thing about moving to Mumbai when you're an adult is that you've already decided you want to be an actor. Mm-hmm. It's just what the city brings with it. It's it's the nature of the beast. Mm. You know, it's like, "Oh, wh- what are you going to do in Bombay?" You go to Mumbai and you're like, "I'm going to be famous." <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. Do you know how to act? No. But who does? <laughs> so and I think that's something that I came with but I think I was uh I was very honest with myself. Like my first film that I did or my first outing where I saw myself on screen, I know I wasn't an actor there. I I couldn't bring myself to say I'm an actor. I've done projects before Sacred Games and I could never call myself an actor. because i would look at myself and i'm like that's not acting mm-hmm. <laughs> like i can see myself in that and that's not acting i'm not being anybody else that's just me me saying lines mm-hmm. of somebody who's supposed to be there in that mm-hmm. play at that time uh i think it was 2017 a show called going viral happened for me it was uh, it's it is on amazon prime i think that was the first time that i acted because i had somebody breaking me out of the psyche of my acting that i knew mm-hmm. uh so i for me acting was more like <sighs> 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 
you know like mm-hmm. anything activated and like if i heaved inside at the end of a line i thought that was acting <laughs> got and, and and then i remember the associate director on the show told me why are you doing that is there something wrong with you and i'm like not yet why and he's like <laughs> oh, maybe you should just say the line for what it is and how it is on paper you mean you don't want the size it's <laughs> <laughs> like yeah avoid them if you can <laughs> and took like a couple of takes and made me do them without the size and that's the first time i felt something shift inside you mm. you know when you weren't um compensating the lines with uh, a physical uh gesture gesture i don't know how you say it you know mm-hmm. like when I, when i realized i wasn't doing that i felt tired you know because it wasn't just from the top it was something inside you that was saying the line mm-hmm. and i think i kind of started stammering as i said yeah, uh, i'm an a- a- actor it's <laughs> 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 come out like that um <clears throat> and i think when sacred games happened uh i didn't have to call myself an actor anymore it's like weird that the whole world started calling me an actor and then it just became an accepted reality of my life. Mm. Mm. So then I'm like, hey, do you know who you were talking to? <laughs> How did the uh How did the Yes. <laughs> How did the um the uh, opportunity of getting to do uh Sacred Games and working with Anya and Kashi uh, come about? Uh, Cuz we got to talk to him as well. uh and he says he never works with anybody he can't trust and so did you already have a relationship with anurag before sacred games yeah it was a really interesting relationship i'd say so uh, again this is a story that not too many people know uh uh the first apartment that i ever lived in bombay like the first building that i ever moved into i i moved into an apartment number called 201 like a flat number called 201 and 402 was inhabited it, it, it was uh, was you had anurag kashyap uh, residing in there mm. huh. and i never said hi to him i never spoke to him i always knew he lived there and i had no courage to walk up to him and say hi i'm kubra seth and i want to be an actor i had no courage <laughs> but it's so bizarre on the 30th of november the first day of the shoot uh we finished shooting and he said uh i live right here and i'm like yeah i know where you live he's like <laughs> sorry <laughs> i don't know where i live and i'm like because i've been your neighbor for like a year and a half <laughs> i didn't just say hi to me uh, i didn't want to tell you i want to be an actor he's like i knew it i knew it and then apparently like you know anurag's uh a uh, house help and his handyman uh his man friday knows everything about my life knows what car i used to drive when i lived there my cat my mom conversations with my mom and everything and and literally it's like just anurag and i had never met mm-hmm. but i think uh it's it's really something that he i i think i think he trusted in me more than i trusted my own self mm-hmm. and i just had one directive from him just one and it was not act in this particular way he just told me once you're on this set you can't be uncomfortable mm like if you're uncomfortable if you at any point are uncomfortable then you make everyone else uncomfortable so just make sure if anything ticks you bothers you just speak to all the ads and finally his team has such a wonderful diverse talent uh who works with him very closely most of them are women and he was like if anything bugs you just just reach out to one of my assistants and just tell them that this is bugging you mm. and uh yeah i i never felt uncomfortable in that set in that setting cool. it was always warm welcoming and it was freedom freedom to do whatever you wanted and he would just guide you and you know he he would just maneuver you yeah i think that's what made 
that part so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, he's also said that he does most of his filming as often as he as he can with the camera as far away from the actors as yeah. possible. Yeah, was that your case as well? Like even your tight shots with Nawaz, was he kind of back and zoomed in on you to give you space? Uh, yeah, I would never remember ever having to cheat with the camera when he's mm -hmm. there. That's fantastic. you know because that's because, amazing. You know, when when you go to like an acting school, I reckon I haven't been to one, but when I believe when you go to an acting school, you know they teach you technical stuff. Like, how do you cheat to so say somebody is taller than you, shorter than you? It's your close-up shot. How do you look at the edge of the camera? I think I had one cheat shot that I had to do, which is you know the scene. I don't know if you remember, uh, but like the scene where you have um, his money guy, uh, Nawaz's money guy, sitting with him and bitching Cuckoo out completely, and says, "Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, Cuckoo." You know, she's got that extra space in there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's, she's overhearing. She's outside the door, right? The door. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the only time when I had to look at the edge of the camera without blinking. Mm. I knew that was something that I had never done in my life. And it was very different from anything that I had ever imagined to do. Because that's when Anurag pointed out to me that for me, uh, my performance happens when I know I have eye contact across the room. Mm -hmm. Being a stage person, you know, you're like making eye contact from, you know, uh, to the length and the breadth of the room. Uh, and through acting, you have literally one focal point and you're like concentrating there because you don't know where your audience is beyond that. But mm -hmm. to assume that your audience is that one point on the camera, at that one point, you know, near the lens and right. being transfixed there and seeing everything without saying anything, I think that was a learning for me. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that you can't have a better school than learning on the job. Mm -hmm. And I think Anurag is a wonderful teacher because he's not about himself at that time. He's about you. He wants to make sure that you look good, you look fine, you look right, you look convincing, and he's doing everything for that other person in the frame, which is incredible. I mean, yeah, it, it was it was pure genius. That's a, that's a huge blessing for an actor to uh, yeah. be able to have that freedom on camera where you don't need to worry about your... Yeah. Uh, he, your... He would just walk, do whatever you want. This is your... And I'm like, what? You're not mm -hmm. going to tell me Dan? You're not going to tell me? Yeah. He's like, no, whatever. I, my, my camera will figure out where you are. That's fantastic. So we would just rehearse, we'll rehearse the scenes and then we'll go for it. And Yeah. Huh. That's yeah. so fantastic. I did want to ask you, uh, we, we obviously loved you in, the, in that role. Can't see anybody else in it. But um, no. I did want to ask you, what was your feedback from that? Because... Here in Hollywood, I don't know if it's reached Bollywood, if somebody who wasn't transgender played a transgender person, there would be a lot of backlash because people don't think actors can, you know, act. Uh, act. <laughs> but also, it, there's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, obviously. You want to have the representation of those actors, but you also want the best person to play that role. So did you experience any of that, or what, do, what are your opinions on that? I think the day the news came out that I was playing this role, I was actually shitting myself because the show hadn't come out. Mm. So I thought they were going to cut the part out straight away because I wasn't allowed to speak about it. And then my uh. PR agent put up a picture of what my look was. Mm. And I thought I was going to cut my part like overnight from the mm. show. I was so scared. <laughs> and even PR though it was on your own cut shop, you, you thought that maybe on your own might not be uh, controversial? <laughs> Uh, you you cannot put Anurag, Kashyap, uh, and you can't like not have controversial in the same sentence. Right, yeah. right, exactly. You know, it's, it's literally yeah. that fish to the water. I mean, that's yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, I was really really worried. But the day you know they put out my picture in the newspaper, and a few dailies picked it up, saying, "What? What are you talking about?" You know, when they picked it up, <clears throat> I think that was the day that we read Scarlett Johansson received flack yep. for mm -hmm. the portrayal of a transgender character on screen. And then she apologized and said, I don't want to play it. 
But I mean, look at this, okay? I'm talking about last year, and you've had a show like Pose come out. Mm -hmm. I have gone onto the internet to see how many characters there were transgender. I mean, there are writers who are transgender, directors, performers who were transgender on the show. Now, but that is a collective effort to represent a, a segment of the society who are actors, performers, you know, on screen. Unfortunately, this segment has had so, so much harder, so has had it so much harder here in our country, you know, just to fight for their basic rights. Yeah. Yeah. Basic rights of acceptance. Forget about performance. Yeah. Right. You're talking about basic rights. Like, would you allow right. me to like, travel with you in the same bus? Right. Or am I allowed to visit a place of worship? Yeah. Am I allowed to wear my identity through my clothes to love whoever I want to love. Mm -hmm. I think that has been such a difficult situation for this segment of the society that I don't think we've had representation, uh, you know, for them as an actor community in our business. One, two, uh, I did ask Anurag the same question, you know, when the news came out. I, I, I have to be very honest. I was very greedy. They asked me to play transgender. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm playing it. Heck yeah, you want to as an actor. Yeah. You bet. I'm, do I'm doing it. You know, it was work for me. I said, I'm doing it. Uh, but when this news came out, I actually reached out to Anurag and I asked him, I said, did you audition transgenders probably? And he said, yes, we did. But nobody fit the part. And we needed somebody who would pull the part off with the kind of conviction that you did. Exactly. And over the time of the release, like the show released and then people watched it, I have met people who have auditioned for it. Mm. Like girls and guys, guys even. Yeah. And I think for me, the most humbling um, compliment was when people who auditioned for the part said, man, nobody could have played it better than you. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for that kind of love that they've had for this character and, and, and the kind of, you know, the kind of respect that, you know, when you put your ego aside and say, hey, you know what, I could have done better. Because I think we always have this, you know, as human beings, we tend to be like, really, if you would have given me that opportunity, I would have shown you. Yeah. But yeah. the the these actors who I met are so enormous as people, as, you know, in their own personalities that never for once was I told that, you know what, you could have done it differently. Yeah. They always said that you did a good job and thank you so much for, represent, for, yeah. for the representation. Because I think what I did was create a space for representation for the community mm -hmm. without you realizing did. Yeah, I didn't really absolutely you did. I think that was something, th that was a shot in the dark, you know. Uh, I don't know if the makers were coming with that point of view, but I know I, I was just being greedy for the opportunity. I didn't know that it's going to, you know, do something for people or have give, give those people a voice to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think what, like eight months later after the show released, Section 377 was abolished yeah. in our league. Mm -hmm. And literally, I received phone calls saying, hey, you know what? You can love whoever you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I think I'm doing that. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, when we watched it, I think one of the things that was a benefit to that character was the fact that so many people didn't know who you were. Because like we said, that was our first exposure to you. And I remember watching it. Outside of Gully you were so outside of yeah, outside of Gully Boy. We <laughs> didn't even realize we had seen you in Gully Boy. But I, I remember watching it, and and either Corbin said it to me or I said it to him, and said, "Is she transgender?" I, I was waiting to find out. Is this actor transgender? Because you were that believable as the character, and I think that was a a, a, a big contribution to it. And I I um. Uh, that was the LGBTQ community. What did friends and family, were they all supportive of you playing Cuckoo? Did they like the character you were playing? I mean, obviously, you're working with Nawaz and Anurag, so. 
Yeah, but I don't think, you know, my family came from, you know, the fact that, oh, this is who you worked with, so it's fine, you can go murder a person. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, and Anurag has a lot of killing people in his in his shows. Uh, but I think, I I think for my, I, I think for like so, um, I said this in one of my stories uh, when I received the offer to do this. My mom was still my manager, mm. so I called my mom and I told my mom that you know what, like, and she's been a single parent for a long, long time, and I told my mom, I said, Ma. Um, you know what, you've been wearing a bulletproof jacket this entire time of your life, trying to like ward off people and, you know, fight for us. Uh, but what's coming up now is a bazooka, so just build yourself a bunker. Yeah. Well like, said. This was big. So I kind of prepared her for, you know, the eventuality of it being completely like written off. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty sure that it could have gone the way that it did or it could have completely backfired sure uh, but then literally she watched the show and i remember my brother watched the show in his living room mm -hmm. and my mom watched the show on her phone in the bedroom and they both finished the show they both walked out and from what i hear my brother said this you know mom had tears in her eyes and my mom has never said she's proud of me like yeah like it's forbidden my mom has forbidden people in my house to say that i'm beautiful she wouldn't let that happen mm. so my mom would never say i'm beautiful uh because apparently it gets to my head but then i am but whatever <laughs> 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 but, but my mom for the very first time in her life said i'm proud of you and i think wow. i think I didn't need any more validation. I didn't yeah. need any more uh, acceptance. My mom liked it. My mom was comfortable. And that was it. And, and she wore it like a badge of honor. And I think that was mm. enough. For me. Yeah. One of my favorite awesome. things you said in an interview was um, that you, somebody asked you if you did research into being transgender. And you said, no, I'm a human. I was playing a human. And I think that's really beautiful. And I love that's how you, you thought you because I think that's the problem with uh, sometimes it, and it also happened a couple years back when uh, gay characters were being introduced and it was like very stereotypical flamboyant gay people as opposed to just real people, even though there are flamboyant gay people. Um, but it was just and that's why I think your character was so uh, impressive because it was almost secondary that she was transgender. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't you're playing a trans. You were playing this person who happened to be transgender, and so I, exactly. I think it was. I think it was brilliant. So I just wanted to tell you that I love that Thank you said that. You. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Uh, but I did want. Have you been uh, in now? I'm sure you're getting tons more opportunities. I know you have uh, something on Voot coming out this next week, right? Um, which is exciting. Ooh. But have have you found out that people are trying to typecast you into the same cuckoo role? No, no uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely lucky, if I can say lucky, or mm -hmm. I don't know, I think, I think Cuckoo came out at the time when people were far more woke than they were, say 10 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, when we were speaking about a stereotypical character playing gay, so, you know, that that person would be, uh, you know, the leading lady's best friend wore peculiar clothes, did something that was stereotypically would qualify to be gay. And then mm -hmm. that probably does not exist as per, you know, the society that we live in. But it was what it was as, as it was portrayed, uh, portrayed on, on, on camera or on screen. But I said this with a lot of conviction then and I say it now. Uh, I think uh, there was a uh, th there was this uh, there was this collaboration of films like an anthrop uh, anth anthropology of films anthrop anth anthropology of films is that how you say it how do you say it uh, anth anthology anthology anthropology is it yeah anthropology is the study of human beings anthology no, is anthology, yeah. anthology. sorry yeah, yeah right right sorry so it's the anthology of films like a series of films that was made on 100 years of cinema. And there were, you know, like, I think four filmmakers. So there was Anurag, the Bakar Banerjee, uh, Zoya, and Karan, yes. who made- Yes, remember this, yes. Films. 
and there was a gay character in Karan's film and there was a child who was a little uh you know effeminate in i think zoya's film mm -hmm. and it took 100 years to bring you know that uh you know that 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 spectrum of of a child discovering who he or she is yeah. and a man standing up to say i'm in love with another man yeah right was married it took them 100 years to bring that kind of realism to cinema yeah. and through a story and literally this happened a few years later so i said it's taken them 100 more years to give a realistic character to a transgender mm -hmm. if another story like this as real has to come i i am in queue don't no problem i'll do it but i'll do it like maybe another 10 years later or yeah. another 10 years later because yeah. Now, anything that you do will always be compared to Cuckoo. Yeah, if right. If you try to play around that character, around, you know, whatever, it'll always be compared to that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we have it in us to take that kind of a risk to play such a character. But at the same time, I think it would be disservice to play it lightly, to write a character that's loose. Absolutely. To write a character that is, again, stereotypical. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would be the greatest disservice that a creator can do. Yeah. I'm so Agreed. glad that nothing has been offered to me so far. And if right. it is offered, then I think now I'm in a place to say, I think you should audition transgender actors for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's coming up for you that we need to know about and that you're excited about and the stupid babies who are watching should be paying attention to that's coming up for you? Uh, I have a show called Illegal that's coming out on Boot. It doesn't stream in the United States, but it's, yeah. it does stream in India. Uh, it's basically a show that uh, works on the legal system of our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think like every legal system across the world, our legal system also has loopholes. Mm -hmm. And I think what they've tried to reach out to uh, through this show is how Yes, everybody is looking for justice, but in the course of finding justice through the legal system, are we giving enough credit to uh, humanity, you know, mm -hmm. or human rights? Mm -hmm. So I play this character who is actually based out of a real story that happened in India where she killed, like she murdered. She murdered seven members of her family along with her boyfriend, like someone she loved, and she's on wow. death row. And she is served life imprisonment but she hasn't been hung or hasn't been executed yet because we don't have female executioners in our country oh yeah wow. so, it's a very thing. so my story is a subtle digression into you know the canvas of the story by itself awesome. but i got this brilliant opportunity to play this mad aggressive outraged woman who just is so angry with the legal system because she knows what she's done is wrong. But you've already proved that it was wrong. You said you're gonna kill her. What the hell are you? Why the fuck are you not getting done with it? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, just get on with the program. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. That's awesome. Because it's not easy to live in jail. I don't think it's easy to live in jail. Uh, I went to the biggest jail that we have in our country uh, once when I was hosting a show for the inmates. Uh, I was hosting a show for the rapists and the murderers in jail. Mm. And I got the opportunity to speak to like a few serving officers there. And it was bizarre because that jail was formed or established when the British Raj was on. And it was, you know, a place to, you know, keep 4,000 inmates. And there are 20,000 inmates there. Mm. And about 60% have never even had have never even been on trial because nobody wants to represent them. Wow. Yeah. And they're just in jail. And I think that is violation of human rights. Yeah, you, so they don't have like a right to an attorney? Yeah, they don't have right to an attorney. You do not have enough public prosecutors. Mm. Wow. Interesting. You know, or you don't have people who are gonna fight their case pro bono. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff like that. So I think uh, for me it was, it was an interesting opportunity to play this mad character called Meher Salam, uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. She is just angry. I know she's angry. She's very angry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of screaming and shouting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that sounds awesome. I wish I wish Voot was in America because there's a few shows that we, we we've seen and that it looks really interesting, but they just don't play. Yeah, it. I'm actually watching a show as we speak. It's called Asur. Asur means the demon. Yeah, I think we watched the, uh, yeah. the trailer for that one. Yeah, we saw the trailer, awesome. and when we were in when we were in India, there were billboards for it. Yeah, I think it was. It, it's a fantastic show. Uh, I like how beautifully the show, you know, is. It, it's it's so detailed, you know. It's just not something that's been written without research. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And every like the mind of the criminal, the mind of the guys who are solving the puzzle. Everybody's so sharp and so clever, mm. and it's it's wonderful chase. I I really think we're making some really good stuff these days. Have you yeah. watched Made in Heaven? No, we we uh, that's no. All, that's all. We, there's a couple uh, TV shows that because um, since we react to uh, the episodes live, uh, and it's making it much more difficult via in quarantine uh, yeah. <laughs> to do that. But there's a few. That's one of them with Zo- Zoya's uh, Made in Heaven. It's uh, such a good show. Oh yeah. my god! Really want to really want to watch it. I don't know if you've seen Rick's tattoo though. No, I haven't. Rick, show your tattoo. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate yeah. that since you're in Gully Boy. This is Zoya. No, yeah. I think uh, somebody sent it to Zoya. We haven't heard specifically from Zoya. Uh, yeah, somebody, somebody we know that knows her very well took a picture of it and sent it to her. But I don't know if she's seen it or if Ranveer or Alia have seen it. I don't know Ranveer saying. Huh? Oh yeah, even Corbin, even more than me, a fan oh. of Ranbir. Oh. Come on, son. <laughs> he's wicked. Yeah, I, he's he's, oh, he's fantastic. I love his yeah. energy. <laughs> I could have played the microphone in that film if I had to. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say a few lines. I was grateful. I mean, I could have played yeah. the mic- I could have played like I don't know the boombox. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I, I would have just been there, like a statue in the film. I don't care. That was our first, because uh, we've only been doing this for a little over a year now, uh, exposure to India. That's but that, famous. Yeah, the, uh, the Gully Boy was the first film we saw in theaters of Indian content, yeah. And did you have subtitles when you watched it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so obviously, oh, yeah. Oh, here yeah. in America, obviously, there's always subtitles oh. in everything uh, that's in theaters here, the limited amount that they show here. But yeah, that was the yeah. first one, and that was the first trailer we had ever seen uh of anything india and that's how it got us into this uh this world of knowing about india um oh, it was gully boy uh so it was uh your film what uh, a good film oh Mom. it is one of our favorites <laughs> i love yeah. that i think it's such a beautiful beautiful film and talking about like really fun films like films that you must watch during quarantine there's a film on amazon prime it's called javani janiman which basically means my youth is my love. Giovanni Gentleman? Yeah. Are you on that one? Song. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's with Saif, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we reacted. To... <laughs> yeah, we, we reacted to that. Me. Thank yeah. you. No, we watched that uh, trailer reaction because uh, we or that's the first thing we were introduced to Saif Ali Khan was Sartaj, and that's what that's what we call him. We call him Sartaj. Uh, we call him Sartaj all the time. Yeah. Yes. So I gotta play this beautiful character in this film mm-hmm. and she's anything but me she's anything but me and then yeah. it was such a great experience working on that film and it just came out yeah a couple months in ago March? yeah no 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 in, no i think end of jan sorry i've just changed like the whole calendar but anyways as you said you know <laughs> rick we're in twilight zone so it doesn't really matter where we yeah, are no, exactly. <laughs> time means yeah. nothing exactly yeah, time means nothing it's all relative right now yeah. so yeah it was it was uh, it released on the 31st of Jan, I think. And it's a very cool film. It's very happy. It's a very yeah. happy, like, it's easy to watch film. How was the difference between that with uh, Saif playing like more of a comedic role and then Sartaj? <laughs> Since you've got, yeah. I, know you didn't, I know you didn't uh, act alongside uh, Saif in, in Sacred Games, uh, but uh, you saw the differences. Yeah, like, you know, so I worked with him in Javani Janiman. I wasn't expecting... You know, a particular 
form or a particular way that Saif would say his lines or whatever, right? Uh, and and he, he, he is incredible with what he does. He sits down, he prepares his notes, he, he, he makes sure that the scene is moving in the right direction. He's always helping you out. He's doing, you know, that little bent of playing it off energies and stuff. It, he's, he's really, really good at it. And then I went and watched some of his films. Mm -hmm. uh, so I watched Salam Namaste. I watched Kabhi um, Khushi um, Kabhi Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which are like now on the OTT platforms. And I felt there was this classic self that you get to watch in these films. Yeah. And the classic self is the guy who's in that moment and he improvises. Mm. And he improvises so well that he can like throw you off guard. That's awesome. And 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 it's the most phenomenal experience because you don't know what's gonna hit you next. Yeah, that's what wonderful. he's gonna, do, what he's gonna yeah. behave. And I think it's such a wonderful journey. And and, and I'm the kind of person, I'm a kind of person who like picks on energies, right? Mm -hmm. And over here, I can't be like Seth because it takes me ten seconds to become Seth. Mm -hmm. Like, if he says, I'm buddy, I'm like, yeah, buddy. And I'm not supposed to be that person. <laughs> you know? I'm the grounded person. I am zen. <laughs> I live like And I'm shitting all over the place. And it was just so cool. <laughs> oh, you see the film? And I will tell you, I, I, I think the director was pure genius. And he did such a wonderful job of restraining me and allowing Saif to do what he does. Yeah. And that's what works. In terms mm -hmm. of the chemistry, these two characters coming in together, it's it's a great. Film. Check that one out. Uh, well, I want to yeah. thank you for your for your for your time. I want to finish off the interview here with a little bit of rapid fire. Uh, so it's like uh, you're on coffee with Karan. Yep. So put your. Uh... Do I get a handful when I come to LA? <laughs> yes. And when so, I chill. I... Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime you come to LA, look us up, please. Absolutely, please. Uh, we will we will give you some uh, coffee. Uh, and, so, and a big salad and fries. Big I'll salad and fries. <laughs> uh, okay, so first one, coffee or chai? Coffee in the day, chai in the evening. Mm. But coffee. Okay. And uh, this is, do you have any pets? But do you, I know you have a cat. So is it, uh, do you, do you, are you a cat person or do you also like dogs? Cat. Cat, okay. I think dogs are just too, like, sloppy. They're just too affectionate. I can't deal with that much affection. <laughs> <laughs> too much love like back off dude it's fine i understand you love me <laughs> <laughs> have, some, have some independence already uh, yeah just please like stop being sloppy Ugh. uh okay. favorite hobby outside of acting uh diving diving very yeah. cool uh favorite hollywood film i just watched a beautiful day in the neighborhood and i love oh. it yeah mm -hmm. the new tom hanks one Oh my God, it's beautiful. But Jojo Rabbit has a piece of oh. my heart. Ah, oh, Jojo. Uh, favorite. Uh, Warrior makes me cry. Sorry. The which one? Warrior makes me cry. Oh, with uh, oh, Tom yeah. Hardy. Yeah, Warrior is fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. a great film. It makes me cry. I'm an asshole. I like, just cry so much in movies. I love it. Favorite Indian film. Oh, favorite Indian food or oh, film. film? Film. Oh, film. Ah. So how one to pick? There's so many. Yeah. Name a few. One, one of, yeah, one of. Gully Boy. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> uh, favorite Hollywood actor? Male or female? Uh, there's so many. I used to have a huge crush on Tom Cruise. <laughs> Can we just stick to crush? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, like he's not my favorite actor, I promise you that. <laughs> but Favorite uh, alcoholic beverage? I thought favorite alcoholic actor. I was like, what? <laughs> favorite alcoholic. What, name it. Go, favorite alcoholic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wine. Perfect. What, red or white? Red. What kind? I'm Pinot Noir. Ah. Nice. Okay, good. Uh, now, favorite... I, I'm a Malbec person, like a Malbec. What, what are you? Malbec. Malbec. Ah! Malbec. Malbec, yeah. Okay. 
Malbec, okay, fair. Uh, favorite Indian food? Uh, chicken uh, reshmi kebab. Mmm, haven't had that. Yeah. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. It's green. Yeah, mm. it's creamy. It, it's really low on the spice value. And, it's quite uh, nice. Favorite, uh, I mean, no, not favorite, a uh, biggest pet peeve. People who dig their noses while driving their cars. <laughs> That's, That's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. So I have to get there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, favorite book? Uh, I uh, picked this book up from Urban Outfitters. I know it doesn't say much about me, but um, it's called Japonisme, uh, which is basically a book that's uh, an everything about Japanese culture. So it's got sushi, it's got, uh, uh, it's got ikigai, it's got forest bathing, mm -hmm. it's got wabi sabi, it's got kintsugi, it's got everything in it. And it's just such a beautiful read. Like you can just go swiftly, you can pick whatever you want out of it. And it's a very beautiful, it's, it's a very beautifully written book because it's a memoir, so it's, it's mm -hmm. lovely. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's a it's a huge honor for us. We, we you know we we really loved the performances, and we're really looking forward to seeing more of you in, here in the future. I'm sure you're getting tons more opportunities now with uh, uh, amazing roles. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, Rick, I don't know if you want to say something. Yeah, no, and please do. If you're in Los Angeles, let us know. We would love to see you again, and and either just hang out or have you where we could. We're no longer in quarantine, and actually meet you in person. So please do let us know when you're coming to LA. We want to do that, and I promise you here today on this interview. What date is it today? On the seventh of May. Is it the seventh for you or the eighth? Yeah, it's the seventh. Is it? You're, you're ahead of us. Yeah. Oh, I'm ahead of you. Yeah, right. Um, I'll go. I'm going to make you proud. Thank you. We believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, we believe it. Yeah, I have, I have no doubt at all. Uh, and I'm hoping we're going to be able to watch that, that new show that you're in. It, it, it sounds fantastic. It's, it's an interesting show. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure <laughs> talking yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you. Thanks have a great day. Guys. Bye. Bye bye. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for.